Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco oh! and welcome to my channel and like from the heart. Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 has been getting lots of updates and we finally, and I really mean it, finally, we have frame generation in this game, especially a game that is so CPU demanding in some parts where people just can't go over those determined FPS because the CPU can't handle it. Because frame generation doesn't really care about your CPU performance per se, because the frames are generated inside the game. They are kind of copied frames, so they don't go they kind of don't pass through your CPU, so your CPU doesn't really matter when we're talking about frame generation, only at least for the base frame numbers. And with this being said, I just received that email from AMD telling me that Space Marine 2 had finally the, the FSR 3.1 update and so on so on. And with this being said, especially by AMD saying that this is FSR 3.1, I want to ask developers and AMD, what, what the, the hell, hell are they, they doing? doing? One of the key points of FSR 3.1 was the decoupling of the frame generation, meaning that you can run any kind of upscaler or even not run any kind of upscaler with frame generation. So you can run DLSS with FSR 3 frame generation, you can run XCSS with FSR 3 frame generation, and you can run it even native TAA with FSR 3 frame generation. That's one of the key points and one of the best points, if I'm being honest, of FSR 3.1. So I need to ask once again, what the hell is AMD and the developers doing? Because there are games like Silent Hill 2 that are confirmed to have FSR 3.1 that don't have the decoupled frame generation and now the same happens in Space Marine 2 that is confirmed to have FSR 3.1 but doesn't have the decoupled frame generation. But well, let's go into the game. I'm running 1440p firstly, then I'll go into 4K and I'm using the 5700X 3D with a 7900X TX and I know this will uh, bottleneck in some case scenarios or in most case scenarios too, especially with an XTX even at 1440p. But uh, this is the CPU that I'm having right now because I'm testing the 5700X TX 3D, sorry, versus the 7600X versus the 7600X 3D for a CPU comparison. That's why the CPU is here. And by the way, have you heard of today's sponsor? Not coffee. It's just GVG More! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. We are getting around 105 FPS and by the way, I'm using 1440p native and with TAA. As you can see, we have now TAA, FSR and the LSS. As you can see, the quality is, well, quite decent, but we still have some... I guess I have to kill the, the beasts first. Bam, you're done, biatch. Oh, there's more. Great. Great, there's more. That's all I wanted. So if we go here, you can see that in the buildings in the back, we do have lots of shimmering and be aware that we're running TAA. So native resolution with TAA native and we still have lots of shimmering, meaning that once again, um, yeah, TAA sucks and developers love to use temporal upscaling or temporal anti-aliasing because it can hide those artifacts that the developers can't, well, program correctly. And they use TAA and temporal anti-aliasing to fix it. So still native resolution, still 1440p, but now using the FSR algorithm, you can already see that it looks much better. One thing that I don't like with FSR native usually is that FSR native brings a lot of sharpness, in some cases even over sharpening the image, which is a thing that I despise. I hate over sharpening, period. But in this case, it doesn't seem to be it. As soon as you look at the buildings in the back, yeah, the shimmering is way, way less than it was before. So, meaning that the temporal stability is better with FSR algorithm compared to the inbuilt algorithm that they have with TAA. To upscaling finally, so instead of being or using FSR native, we're now using FSR quality, less shimmering than we had before with TAA native, which is impressive. Although we still have a lot of shimmering and it looks bad as hell. Look at the cape, for example. Yeah, it just looks so, so, so bad. In this game, I don't advise anyone to use FSR quality. Um, yeah, just don't use it, FSR quality, if 
you are running anything below 4K. Just don't use it. The quality isn't worth it. We have lots of shimmering here and there and it doesn't look good. The game engine or the game programming is already quite bad here because we have this motion blur when we're moving and it is it gets way more noticeable with upscaling thing that I really don't like. So once again, what you want to do here is go and use frame generation, especially because as you can see, we're now running at 96, 95, 96 um, of the GPU usage, meaning that the 5700X 3D is already, already kind of bottlenecking. Even though we are CPU bottlenecked, as soon as you enable frame generation, bam, you go up to 250 FPS, which is just great. So if you want a little, a little bit less quality, maybe some shimmering here and there, as you can see, because the shimmering does not appear everywhere. It just depends on where you're looking at and the part of the map where you're running at. For example, if we look here, we don't have that much shimmering. It's not that annoying. It's still there, of course, but not that annoying. Oh, we have more, more company here. I could make a juice with these guys. As soon as you enable the native resolution though, so FSR native from the quality mode, yeah, things look much better. Oh, the last one in the packet. Things look much better, the shimmering almost goes away and we still have 170 FPS because even though the CPU can't produce more than 120 generally, we still have way better quality because, of course, because we are using frame generation. So we have more FPS, not better quality, but more FPS because we're using frame generation. Now we're running 4K native without any upscaling whatsoever. And look at this, we only have 60 FPS. We're running maximum settings, of course, but we only have 60 <laughs> FPS, even with an XTX, which is just crazy how heavy these games are. And I mean, it looks great, but 60 FPS only at 4K native, for a game that looks like this, well, isn't bad, of course, but isn't that great also. But yeah, there are games that run way worse, that's for sure. As soon as we go now, we can actually enable upscaling since it makes sense to enable upscaling because with quality mode, you are actually upscaling from 1440p to 4K, meaning that again, the, um, the general quality should be much better because the render algorithm has a way higher render resolution to work with. So let's look at there, for example, where we saw the shimmering and let's see. And yeah, I can tell you right away since we are going from 1440p to 4K, the motion artifacts, let's call them that, the motion artifacts that we have are way, way less. So we don't see that motion happening because the render resolution went from 960p to, um, to 1440p, which is a lot. And even the shimmering that we have there is also way less. As you can see, that's great. So overall quality, I'm looking at it, looks great. I don't see much shimmering, so 4K, yeah, there's a bit there. But yeah, generally it's just a bit here and there, but we are still getting around 80 FPS, 90. As soon as we go and we enable, so FSR quality at 4K and we enable frame generation, let's see what we get and people are getting out of cars constantly. So we go from, let's say 90 FPS to 150. It is not double, but let me tell you that, I mean, even without anti like 2, and believe me, anti like 2 should be here already. anti like 2 has been released a couple of months ago, so it should be here. But even without anti lag, the latency is very, very low. Frame generation is well built here. I can tell you that it is a bummer that it isn't decoupled, but at least the frame generation doesn't really have much latency. I'm running with a, with a base frame rate of 90. With frame generation, the base frame rate might go, let's say, down to 80 or 70 something, but it looks great. The latency is really, really low. For what it is, the latency is really, really low. And yeah, now we're down to 140 because of the of the mobs, but the gameplay is just fluid as it should be. I don't see many artifacts besides from the AGD, which is normal to some extent. And yeah, we have some 137. Remember, this is an XTX, of course, but we're running maximum settings and we're only using FSR quality. And yeah, it looks good. Not gonna lie, 
it looks great. Mm. <laughs> the latency is very, very low. I'm actually impressed with the latency in this game. Maybe they already implemented anti-lag to automatically inside. I don't really know, but it just works very, very nice. Very, very low latency, which is great. And we're now having 140 FPS. Now let's disable the frame generation just for one last test. Disable frame generation, my bad. So FSR frame generation disabled. And we are now getting around 86, 90 FPS, which is what we were having before. And instead of quality mode, let's go down to balanced mode and see how it goes. We go up to 100. The quality doesn't look as great now. Still playable, I would say, but it just doesn't look as sharp and we can see that the, that the details just aren't there. Yeah, I have to interact there, but I don't really want to. Let's say if we're talking about shimmering, honestly, the shimmering is not much here. Even in the cape, using FSR balanced mode at 4K, the shimmering is not much. If you look at the wings, those metal wings there, you can see that there is a bit of shimmering. Maybe that doesn't really happen much when we go to quality mode. Let's try it. As soon as we go to quality mode, let's see if that happens. Yeah, still there. And as soon as we go to quality mode, of course, things look way sharper and with way more quality because they have more quality. But let's now go even further and try performance mode. Now, upscaling from 1080p to 4K. And if I'm being honest, it's not bad. Balanced was playable. And as soon as we move, of course, we have less detail and so on. That's with every resolution, even TAA has issues but overall it looks fine. And imagine, okay, now we're running performance mode, so we're having a CPU bottleneck, no issue. You just go to frame generation, you enable it, bam, and we're now running at 190 FPS, 170 now, so it kind of variates depending on your base frame rates. But again, it's running pretty well and the latency is very, very low. Very, very low in my opinion. Yeah. Is it the best quality that I've seen? Not really. Is it playable? Absolutely. Especially in terms of latency. Absolutely. I wasn't really expecting such a low latency. I'm pretty sure that they, have, that they implemented some kind of anti-lag 2 inside without letting you or giving you the option to enable it or disable it. And if we want to go back once again to the quality mode, we still get around 140 FPS and we have way better quality, way, way more detail overall and the game just looks much better. So, is FSR kind of okay in Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2? It is. It is quite of okay -ish. We do have better quality than we have with TAA, meaning that TAA implementation is, again, crap. Um, and FSR actually kind of puts away most of those shimmering issues that we have. It still has some, of course, but it fixes them mostly. I believe that the LSS might be better here. Not in terms of the motion, but at least in terms of the shimmering, it should be better from what I've tested with the 4080 Super. But yeah, you can definitely use FSR now um, and you can definitely use frame generation. Frame generation is very well implemented. And while the upscaling isn't the best, frame generation is very good. Imagine that you have an XTX and even if you want to use the XTX, let's say at native 4K, you can still run native 4K, then push frame generation and you're still running quite well. And even this, so if we're having around 90 FPS, it means that we should we should be having around, uh, let's say, 40 something, yeah, 40 something base frames without frame generation, because frame generation also costs, also costs FPS, and even there, the latency is far from 45 FPS. With 45 FPS native, native, we would have way higher latency. But again, it is not advisable to go as low. But if you can go to quality mode again, we go immediately up to 140 and the game just feels awesome. So basically, in terms of FSR upscaling, if you are running at 1440p and you can run your game with FSR native, do it. It is the best option that you can have in between TAA and FSR is to run FSR native. The, um, the overall, yeah, the overall performance is basically the same in between TAA native and FSR native and FSR native gets rid of those shimmering parts. Well, 
at least some of those shimmering parts uh, that TAA has, so that's great, it's a win-win situation, better quality, same performance, and if your GPU is able to, to run at 4K, and if you're running at 4K, you can simply use FSR quality because it is completely fine. And as for frame generation, if you are having anything above, let's say, 70 base frames, 65, 70 base frames, definitely use frame generation because it is a must. In this case scenario, with frame generation enabled, we are having, for example, here around 60 something, 70 base frames, and it just feels great. We have almost no latency, apart from the AGD, where we also, the UI, let's call it like that, uh, where we will always have some tearing here and there. Apart from that, the game feels great. I see no tearing whatsoever. It feels very, very smooth and definitely frame generation here is a win-win situation for me and for people that have CPU bottlenecks here and there, frame generation is a savior, especially here that it performs very well and has very, very low latency. So again, upscaling 1440p and below, yeah, just try to run FSR native. Try to reduce the 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 quality the quality mode from let's say from epic to high or something like that, and still use FSR native. As for frame generation, big yes, just use it if you can because it's it's yeah it's a win-win situation, guys. Upscaling, meh, frame generation, great. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, if you want to, to watch more videos comparing FSR to XSS to the LSS and even native resolution, you have this one passing right now in the screen where I do a more side-by-side -side comparison. While this one, of course, it is more like a... Yeah, it is more like a as we game comparison showing you some details here and there and how it goes or how it doesn't. Leave your comment in the comment section, let me know what you think about the performance, about frame generation, if you if you are using it or not, if you think it is a savior or not, what do you think about upscaling, if it works fine for you or not really, just let me know because I really want to know. Thank you very much once again guys and see you in the next video.